Rachel Bronick joins us here as uh, we take another break from swimming against Bellarmine. Welcome. And uh, this has been a year for you guys, now the third year back from swimming. You're building this program year after year and getting competitive, it seems like, with each and every event. Uh, am I on the right track here? Are, are you guys uh, feeling the same way? Yeah, definitely. Um, we've definitely built up a lot of momentum to this point, and we are just excited to compete. Yeah, you don't get a chance to compete at home very much. What does that mean to you guys? Um, it definitely means a lot because we are on the road a lot, and it it is a wear on your body to travel before a meet. So it's nice to be able to just relax and um, get a good night's sleep in your own bed, yeah. and then just get ready to go for the day. You have a couple of weeks off before the first ever GLVC championship event. Uh, you're kind of part of history once again in the first GLVC meet. How are you? How are you thinking about that? What's what's the thought toward that? Um, we're all just really excited. Like. We didn't think this would happen for a little bit longer, so to have it bumped up um, to this year was really great. So You had some luck, though, in the Northern Sun last year. Yeah, we did. Um, we all did really well. Um, our team competed great, so it was, it's going to be a good feeling to be in our own conference and be against the teams that we're going to compete with for years to come. This is a, a good swim conference with Drury in it and all that, but Bellarmine is a, a team that uh, is about a year behind our development as an NCAA Division II team. I know you love to compete against the best, but is it kind of nice to be facing somebody that's in the same part of their development as we are as a program? Yeah, it definitely, um, it definitely feels good because we were there a year ago and so um, we're able to compare uh, how teams are, and so it feels good. Rachel, what's been your best moment at Jewel as a swimmer? Um, I'd probably have to say our championship meet my freshman year, or my sophomore year, actually. Um, I just had a really good meet. The team did really well. We all saw a lot of drops, and we all competed really hard, so it was a good moment. Is that the thing you look at that, that you drive toward your individual times or if you're in a, a relay, that dropping, as opposed to coming in first or, or is it somewhere in between? Um, I would definitely say it's somewhere in between. I mean, you always want to come in first and do your best, but you could come in last and still have the best race of your life. Yeah. So it, it's just a, it's kind of a mix between what happens within each race. What happens if that happens? If, if you're, you, you don't have your best time but you do well or vice versa? How do you handle that mentally? What, what do you say to yourself? Um, you just kind of got to pat yourself on the back for either accomplishment that you did and just work that much harder in the pool for the next competition. Swimming, like track, it has some aspects of team and has a lot of aspects of individual work. you like that? Do, do you enjoy the team and, and the individual stuff? How does that play out? Definitely. Um, that's probably one of the main reasons why I chose to swim because of the individual aspect and the team aspect and how they can, like you're always swimming for your team, but sure. you can also swim for yourself to help your team too. So. It's definitely a good mix. This is a sport that takes a tremendous amount of devotion. You guys are swimming all year round and uh, I know you're swimming many hours a day, but what's something that you like people to know about being a collegiate swimmer that maybe they don't get, they don't know? Um, I mean, as hard as it is, it's it's still a lot of fun. Is <laughs> I it? mean, yeah, you do like you tell people that you work out for like 4 or 5 hours a day yeah. and they just go, "Oh, geez, like how do you do that?" but at the end of the day, like there's a really good feeling of accomplishment and like fun with your teammates. Uh, Mark Gold, though, he's driving you. He's driving you all the time. <laughs> How do you handle that? Uh, <laughs> you get mentally tough. It it comes from years and years of swimming, and for a lot of us, this isn't our first time having a coach like that. Right. And for some, it is. So I mean. It just takes time. You just got to build that mental toughness. I just got done reading a little bit of Coach Gold's biography, and 16 times an All-American. He's got some credentials. Yeah. And you guys, uh, when you're exhausted, when he's pushing you more and more, you think about that a little bit. Think about this is this is how we need to do things to get better. Yeah, definitely. Um, we definitely all of us put our faith in Coach that he knows what we're doing, or that he knows what he's doing to get us where we need to be. So, I mean. We definitely think about that. Sure, sure. When you're preparing for a meet like Bellarmine, you were talking about being at home, but what's being on the road like for a swimmer? Um, I mean, it's fun. It's kind of tough at the same time just because 
your body kind of hurts a little bit after being on a bus for so long and coach does a really good job of getting us in the pool before um, to loosen up in between bus rides but again that mental toughness comes back and you have to be mentally tough to put the pain of your body behind you to sure. swim fast you guys spent some time in Florida last week training uh, and what is it like to go on a Florida training trip um, it's a little intimidating. You kind of don't know what you're getting yourself into until you're there, and then you just work really hard. <laughs> you don't have any other options. So, <laughs> what year are you in school? I'm a senior. And what are you going to do when you get done with with Jewel? Um, I have applied to grad school for occupational therapy. Okay. So, hopefully that works out. <laughs> you graduating in the spring then? Yes. Okay. What kind of occupational therapy? You want to own your own clinic, or are you going to work in a bigger facility? Uh, probably work in a bigger facility, hopefully like in a hospital setting. Right. Rachel, where are you from and, and would you tell us a little bit about your family? Um, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. I have an older brother who um, goes to school at Wichita State and he's a personal trainer and yeah. You started out at Adams State, right? That's in Colorado? Yes. Made the move here and uh, is it tough to be a transfer student? Um, at times it's tough but other times, I don't think I'd have it any other way. Sure. It's obviously, I would think, worked out for you since you're going to yes. graduate. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, when we talk about Jewel and the whole experience, what would you say about your experience at Jewel, not only as an athlete, but as, as, a, as a student as well? Um, it's definitely been a great experience just because of all the opportunities that I've been able to do and participate in. And so. You ready to swim today? Oh yeah. What uh, what events will we see you in? Um, definitely the 200 fly. So. Okay, that's your event. Yes. All right. <laughs> Rachel Baronic has been our guest here, and we'll be back with more swimming in a moment.